Uh, hello, 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 and welcome to Sports Buzz, the fanatical view. I am, of course, your host, Scott D. Lewis, here live in studio. We are back live. We've been doing a bunch of tape shows, as you well know. Our loyal viewers been tuning in to check out our football coverage, the Super Bowl coverage, the playoff coverage. And everything else in between. And right? everything else in between. It was mostly football the last few yeah. weeks as things got rather interesting, as we all know, with the New York football giants, the mm. G-Men. And they did the damage, a little damage on those. A little those, damage to those, those New Patriots. England Patriots. So, woe is those Patriots finally getting over that bitter defeat if you tuned in last week you know i was quite depressed about that situation but the good news is we are back live and we are ready to turn the page on the football season and get into some other of the sports that we have been missing out on namely the nba and what has turned into one of the most amazing stories in recent hi history linsanity at madison square garden just a total total linsane in the membrane situation going on over at the garden with the new york formerly bricks now they're returning back to the knicks as they had all these problems going on uh, but they're getting it together with the unknown commodity the kid from ivy league harvard Coming through for the Knicks, stepping in when they needed it most, sitting at 8 and 15, they were, and uh, they uh, needed something to spark them because Carmelo Anthony was out with injury. Amari Stoudemire was dealing with family tragedy uh, situation where his brother unfortunately passed away in a car accident. So it was a bad situation okay. for the Knicks. Things right. couldn't be worse. Okay. They were desperate for something, and they got it in the yep, form of Lynn Sane, Jeremy Lynn, the kid who yes. had been cut by how many teams there, Bob? Uh, at least, what, five, right? But, yeah, three teams, I think, and he was on the D-League. And there is, of course, the voice of my right-hand man, Mr. Bob Rod Jr., who was uh, faithfully dealing with some technical difficulties yes. as we were getting things going. <laughs> Let's get the formalities out of the way, Bob. It's been so long, we, we don't know how to run the show anymore. This is true. We, uh, well, you know, we're, we all have a little one technical Every time we go live, another, we got something going on in the background there. Right. Anyways, Bob, of course, is with us, and Bob's got his show Spotlight on. Uh, which airs Tuesday nights and yes. uh, re-airs, what, Wednesdays? Wednesdays at noon, yes. So uh, you can always check out Spotlight on. Bob, of course, covers the Danbury Whalers. We'll get into the Whalers and all that's going on with them as they head for the playoffs. Hopefully they'll be in the playoffs. They're in position right now uh, to make it. Yep. And also we will talk about the uh, chilly winter warm-up, which takes place on Sunday, February 19th from 1 to 4 p.m. down at the home of the uh, Danbury Whalers, the Ice Arena in Danbury. We will talk more about that later in the show as well. I uh, want to say in the studio tonight, we have some special guests back there helping us out. John Newmuller from Danbury Live. Uh, if, you want, if you're interested in Danbury politics, tune in to Danbury Live on Saturdays, 7 to who knows when. I mean, yes. It goes at least an hour. Or maybe more. Sometimes more. John likes to run along with his yes. show as yes. he talks about all things happening in Danbury politics in the area and also his show rears on Tuesdays at 11. And I do believe uh, Barb Kaidel from These Days, which her show airs after ours, after ours later tonight, tonight at yes. 7 30 right here on comcast cable channel 23 uh, barbara's in there helping out as well so uh, let's get back to what we were talking and about we the would like uh, to send out our uh, uh hopefully he gets better fast mike to mike tui who's mike tui uh, yes with a mike, little... mike has been our guy our expose cinema guy doing uh duty for us and he's out coming down with a little bit of a bug and he didn't want to get anybody sick so we told him to stay away and we got the fill-ins doing a great job in the studio but yes back to the nba and back to the linsane linsanity linsational super nintendo yes. jeremy lynn uh leads the knicks to seven straight wins they did win again last night. He only went for 10 points last night, but yes. he had a career-high 13 assists. Yes. So he has been dishing and swishing, as yes. Clyde Frazier might say, uh, leading them from an 8-15 and record to 15-15, and yes. firmly back in the mix. And Carmelo Anthony hasn't even been playing for the who, stretch who's, who's yet. Who's Carmelo Anthony? Stat and Melo, who? We spent all this time to get him here, and what'd he do? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. He leads them to the 8-15 record. He's been out with injuries. Stoudemire has been back for a couple of games. It looked like they were going to lose that first game 
that Stoudemire came back up in Toronto, and Linsanity strikes again yeah. with uh, five tenths of a second left. He hits a three pointer that to was win a great the game. Shot, so it just went up and oof. oh, just <laughs> dribbling it down, top of the key, swish, nothing but net, nothing but nylon. Linsanity strikes again with the buzzer beater this time in a game where the Knicks really were losing throughout. You know, it was kind of close in the first half, but they were down by 10, 12 points for most of the second half of this game. They put a little mini run together at the very end of the game, and sure enough, they end up tied with the ball in his hands. He dribbles it down, goes one-on-one, -on -one, top of the key, drains the buzzer-beating three to win it. So in this stretch, uh, a couple interesting things about this stretch. The fans have embraced them immediately, not only at home, but right. also on the road which was amazing because three games into the stretch in Washington, it was practically a Nick home game. The place went crazy as they took down the Wizards, Lay Wiz. Uh, they beat New Jersey was the first game. They beat Utah, which is a good win because Utah has been a pretty decent team. They beat Washington on the road. They came back home, took out the Fakers. Yeah, who's them, them Fakers doing out there in LA? Fakers who had come off a overtime win in Boston the night before. Fakers. It's worth noting, only 5-10 and 10 on the road this year, not doing so good. Then they went out and beat Minnesota in a scrappy game that they were losing in that game. Then they went to Toronto and won again. And this is record-setting crowds for Minnesota, Toronto, and Washington as they have gotten into it uh, with the crowds coming out to support. And then they came back home and won an easy one last night against Sacramento. Uh, coming up, they have New Orleans. And uh, and then uh, they have the All Star break coming up as well. Yeah, it's what? Yeah, I think it's Ooh. next week, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know he's going to be actually getting involved in the All Star festivities. Right. Um, you know they have let's see New Orleans and Dallas, New Jersey and Atlanta to finish this homestand, and then they are at Mi Miami, and then it's the All Star break. Right. So we'll see. They got a couple tough games in there with Dallas, Atlanta, and Miami. They're catching Dallas maybe at a good time. Jason Terry and Delonte West are both injured right now, but Dallas has been playing good. So that'll be a tough one against the defending champs. New Jersey, horrible. The other side of the river there, losing seven straight. The Nets, the Nets not doing so good. Atlanta and Miami, tough test before the break. But NBA getting smart. They're going to put him in the uh, shooting stars competition, and they're also going to have him help I'm in Shup uh, Shumper in the dunk competition. Yes. He will be assisting him. I got a funny feeling by the time we get to the All-Star break, there's going to be some uh, mystery injuries coming oh, yes. down the pipe. And Jeremy Lin's just going to be in the All-Star game, maybe even, even in the starting lineup. I got a feeling he will be the starting lineup. Unbelievable. The kid from Harvard, they go from the Bush, from Bush League, the Knicks do, to Ivy League right. with the Jeremy Lin coming through. Averaging 25 plus a game and eight plus assists a night. Right. He scored more points in his first six games than any player had in the NBA uh, since like 1977. So this is no fluke situation. He's lighting it up uh, on the offensive end and distributing the rock, notably last night with the 13 assists as he got it done, only scoring the 10 points, but they didn't need him to have the heroics as they had it all going on against Sacramento last night. And he's really getting everybody else to help out. Uh, Chandler doing well. Shumpert with defense. Jared Jeffries with the defense. Landry Fields, who had been the forgotten man, had played so well last year before the trade for Melo, then he had seemed lost. Now he's back in the mix. Bill Walker, a guy they got traded for uh, from the Celtics last year. And Steve Novak. Who is Steve Novak? The guy's shooting 45% from three-point land. Unbelievable. So they were waiting for B. Diddy to come and be the saver. It turned out to be Jeremy Lin. Yes. So he's got them back at 500, and he's got the garden fired up, that's for sure. Yes. And he's really got all of the sports world and not even the sports world. Stephen Colbert, I turned it to the Colbert Report the yes. other night. Yeah, he he leads off his about show about yes. talking about Jeremy Lin. Last night, top 10, yep. top 10 Lin names. Yes. So all over the place on David Letterman last night. He's a absolute sensation we'll have to see what happens when Melo comes back in of course all the talk is <laughs> can Melo fit in or will Melo need to dominate the ball like he had been doing I, do I think it's going to be good we just send Anthony back to back to Denver right yeah. no 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 he's here for good I think it's going to be a good situation they needed a point guard uh, to run D'Antoni's system now they got a point guard I think the real question more is it not going to be you know, can uh, Mello fit in? I think it's more going to be, can Linsanity continue? Yeah. I mean, can he keep it up? I mean, we're talking about a kid who has been, 
you know, not played any significant time in the NBA at all. And really, he played under the radar at Harvard. And now he's thrust into the limelight, thrust into the spotlight. It's turning into a Tebow mania situation. If you've noticed, Jeremy Lin uh, likes to praise the Lord in yes. his uh, situation, much like Tim Tebow. So now there's going to be the Lin mania situation that we saw with Tebow mania. Well, Already wow. people talking about that aspect of it. But I think more importantly, as teams now start keying in on Lin and uh, trying to take away what he does best and forcing him to go left, which he does not have a good left hand, and things like that, and starting to get tape on this guy, will they be able to shut him down as he starts going up against the better teams? You know, winning seven straight is awesome, but he did do it against some of the lesser teams, New Jersey, Washington, Minnesota, Toronto, yes. Sacramento. Not to, uh, you know, Minnesota has actually been pretty good. Utah, I mentioned, also pretty good. But, you know, let's see what happens when this schedule gets a little bit tougher and things get uh, a little tighter. And, they're, you know, we see what happens when they run into a tough spot. Can he respond then? I Other mean, things going on in the NBA, we won't stick only to Linsanity and the <laughs> Knicks. The Celtics last week, I was happy about what they were doing. This week, I'm not happy about what they're doing. Losers of three of four. They lose to Detroit last night, Bob. Unbelievable. Detroit has been 5-3 and three in the month of February, playing a little bit better. They lost to Toronto last week. You right. just can't do this. They lost the overtime game against the Fakers in Boston. That was yeah. disappointing by one point. Uh, and then the big question really I have is what's the deal with Rajon Rondo? They go 9-1 while he's out. And he comes back and... And they go th uh, one in three since he's been back. So maybe he should go back out again. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Kevin Garnett was out last night. This is the, uh, this is the way of the NBA because, you know, as we mentioned, the Knicks red hot right now. They were ice cold before that. Before they were ice cold, they had a hot streak. Yeah. A lot of teams going through this funk where they, you know, get things together, start playing well, but then they suffer some injuries. Doc Rivers said after uh, the game against the Bulls, which they won during the stretch, the only game they did win, that uh, he, did, he thinks they have not played a single game this year where either team was at full strength. Everybody dealing with injuries as they come off this lockout shortened season, no preseason, not enough time for guys to get in shape. So a lot of injuries, a lot of guys going down with injury. Uh, so it's been an interesting situation. But the Celtics sitting at uh, 15 and 13 uh, behind Philadelphia, who still remains out front. Philly 20 and 10, 6 and 4 they are in their last 10 as they've had this tough stretch to deal with. They've done pretty well. They've lost to the Heat, the Spurs, the Clippers, and the Magic, but they also had some quality wins as well uh, against the uh, Hawks, the Lakers, some other teams of that magnitude, the Bulls they beat as well. So Philly's still doing well, still sitting at 20 and 10. I mentioned the Nets losers of seven straight. 8-22, and 22, Bob. Things yeah. can't get worse well, in New Jersey. Well, how about the, the uh, what was it, is it Washington? They were, uh, it finally had a, they were out for, down in the bottom for a while well, or two, yeah. right? And then they're still pretty down there, but uh, they've got a few wins at least. Yeah. The John Hall area not going very well. Bulls and the Heat leading the way in the NBA. Both uh, Bulls at 24-7. and seven. The Heat 23-7. and seven. Uh, Derrick Rose has been out with injury. He's a game-time decision tonight as they play the Celtics again in Chicago. The good news for them is Luol Deng, who was uh, worried that he might be out for the year. He has already returned, and he's playing well. Uh, for you UConn fans, Richard Hamilton, Rip City, he has been out. Missed, uh, he's only played in 11 games so far. Uh, he has been out with injury, so he has not been a contributor much for the Bulls. The Pacers, who were a surprise team starting the season, have now lost five straight. Yeah. The Pacers were actually the last team, I believe, in the NBA to lose back-to-back -back games. They lost back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back -to -back as they lose five straight now. Atlanta, Memphis, Denver, Miami, and Cleveland, a little bit of a tough stretch for those Pacers. Uh, Atlanta and Orlando sitting at 19 and 11. Milwaukee, 12 and uh, 17, losers of three straight. They are in ninth place in the NBA conference. They're the only team that really, I think, has a little bit chan legitimate chance to crack into the top eight in the Eastern Conference, where the, the Knicks currently sit at eight. Uh, Cleveland, 11-16, I don't see them being able to do anything. Milwaukee, I like their talent pool, so I think they could possibly get in the mix if they can get their act together, but I really think it's gonna be an eight-team yeah. race in the uh, Eastern Conference out west 
as we were looking at some college hoops, which we will get to momentarily, but we still got a little NBA to wrap up. Uh, out West, Oklahoma City, top team in the NBA, 22 and seven, actually a half game behind uh, the Bulls at 24 and seven, the top team in the NBA. But Oklahoma City, out West, they are the team to beat, 22 and seven. Watch out for the Spurs, Bob, winners yes. of nine straight, 21 and nine they are. The Clippers are uh, also a comp, uh, division leading team at 18 and nine, but they suffered the big injury to big shot Chauncey Billups. But Billups <laughs> out for the year with the Achilles tendon mm. pull. <laughs> that's oh, bad. that's painful. Bad I have bad. suffered an Achilles injury in my life. Let me tell you, I know that pain. Uh, the Mavericks I, uh, Mavericks I mentioned playing well, 1911, they've won five straight. Terry and West both hurt. Uh, we'll see how that affects them. They've been dealing with injuries all this whole season. You know, Dirk has been out of times. Jason Kidd was out of times. But they've been playing well, the defending champs, as they acclimate some of the new players. Houston and Denver. Houston, hello, Bob. 17-13, yeah. and 13, not yeah. bad for Houston. I don't even know who's on that team. Not me either. That's just I couldn't name team. a single player on that team. <laughs> I don't know, but they're 17-13. and 13. Denver has been dealing with some injuries as well. They've been hot. Uh, they lost a few games, but they are still treading water, maintaining the situation above 500. And the Fakers, 17 and 12, yeah. 12 and 2 at home, and uh, 5 and 10 on the road. They cannot play on the road. Question That's... will be: Are they going to make a trade midseason? I don't know. Memphis and Portland right behind them at 16 and 14. Rudy Gay, 25 points last night. Mm. Every time I look at a box score, he is lighting it up. It's only averaging 18.9 per game. But they are playing extremely well, especially when you consider Zach Randolph, who was the beast in the postseason last year, has been out. Right. And he's still going to be out for a while. Utah and Minnesota, 14 and 14 and 14 and 16. The Warriors have been playing well. Watch them. They are 11 and 15. But Mark Jackson, who took over coaching duty, has got them playing better lately. Phoenix, Steve Nash, is he going to get traded this year? They're only 12 and 18. All right, that's our NBA talk. We took up about 20 minutes. Let's yeah. move quickly through some other things. Uh, college basketball, Husky Hoops finally got a little breather last night. 80-54 win over DePaul. They're 2-6 and six in their last eight, yeah. Bob. They're Not they're, they're... good. 6-7 and seven in the Big East. 16-9 and nine overall. A bubble team as the defending champ. Not good. Of course, Coach Calhoun is still out, and he will be out for at least three more games. Uh, they've got finishing off five games. They're going to have to pull it off, get themselves some wins in these next ones. A big one against Marquette, who they lost to already this year. Monday they're at Villanova. Uh, Nova not playing well this year, so that's a game they absolutely have to win. Saturday they get a rematch against Syracuse. Syracuse spanked them down the stretch 85-67 the other uh, this weekend, as a matter of fact, and that was a two-point game, Bob. Yeah. Unbelievable. They were losing 65-63. They get beat 85-67. It seems almost impossible that that could happen. Uh, they have Providence as well the following week, and they finish against Pittsburgh. They have to be Providence, and they would like to be Pittsburgh, who has played better after a terrible start. In the Big East, Syracuse, of course, in first place, 13-1, 26-1 overall. We don't even like to mention their name. <laughs> Those traitors that they are leaving yeah. uh, for the ACC, but they're forcing me to mention their name. Unbelievable, 26 and one, number two team in the country. Marquette, number 12 in the country, in second place in the Big East. Notre Dame, third in the Big East. They are ranked number 23. Georgetown, ranked number 10. They are fourth in the Big East. South Florida, not getting any love from the uh, national voters, but they are nine and four in the Big East. Yeah. Good season for them, 16 and 10 overall. Louisville, ranked 19th. 20 and 6, 8 and 5 in all. Cincinnati, 8 and 5. Sir, uh, Seton Hall has moved back in front of UConn, even though UConn has handled them easily. Uh, they are 7 and 7 overall. West Virginia below UConn. Nationally speaking, Kentucky, 25 and 1, uh, number one team. Missouri is the number one, uh, number three team, 24 and 2. Kansas has moved into the top five with big wins over Baylor recently. Baylor's struggling. They've fallen all the way to nine. Kansas is number four. Duke, of course, propelled yeah. back into the top five with their unbelievable win yes. against North Carolina last game. week. K 
Carolina choked this game. I don't care yeah. what anybody says. Duke with a great run. Doc Rivers' son. How about Austin oh, Rivers yes. hitting the three to win it late? But, I mean, come on. Carolina choked this game oh. horribly. They were – ah, I don't even want to talk about it. That was brutal. Carolina should be ashamed. Tar Heel blue, feeling blue after that one. Carolina falls all the way to eight at 22-4. and four. Michigan State, number seven, 25. Ohio State, number six, 22-4. Georgetown rounded out that top ten. Uh, so that's the major top ten teams. Teams to watch out for, Bob. UNLV, I've been talking about them yes. all season. Number 11, the running Rebels uh, looking pretty good from the Mountain West. Florida, I'm not sold on them, but they're ranked number 14. Michigan, undefeated at home, Bob. Not so good on the road, but they are ranked number 17. Indiana, another Big Ten team. I like the Big Ten this year. I like the Big 12. I think when I fill up my brackets, um, I'm going to be looking at some of those teams. That, that, that Colorado State. Uh, CSU, uh, <laughs> I've been lamenting to you the fact that they can't play all their games at home. It because be nice, they're 0-5 right? in conference <laughs> on the road, but they're playing well at home. They're going to have to finish strong, and then they're going to have to do damage in their conference tournament if they want to get into the big, uh, the big dance because they haven't done enough, unfortunately, to do any uh, breaking into the top 25. So I'll keep you updated more on them later. Murray State did finally suffer a loss. They are 25-1, and one, fall to number 16. Uh, so that's the college basketball team. Let's do a little NHL real quick before we talk Whalers to wrap it up. And I did want to mention actually golf as well, Bob. Wow. Phil Mickelson, hey, lefty lives. But we'll get to that in a second as we see the NHL pictures coming up. Your Rangers. They're doing a tear. Ah, unbelievable. Tearing, uh, they beat my Bruins again. They beat the Bruins right before the uh, All-Star break to hold on to first place. Now they got a seven-point cushion as they yes. beat the Bruins again, 3-0. We talked about Lynn Sanity. How about Lund Sanity? Sanity. Lundquist. Yes. Lundquist is on 42 fire. saves, 3-0. Shutout over the Bruins. Unbelievable. Rangers that, number one team in the Eastern right Conference, 79 points. Red Wings actually officially have more points, 80 points, wow. but they have three games in hand, so the Rangers are actually a better team if you look at it record-wise. Uh, the Rangers lead the Eastern Conference, 79 points. Bruins second place, 72 points. Watch out for those Devils, 68 yeah, they're, they're points. Sitting, they're sitting in the, uh, the, in the catbird seat. They're Senators, 68 points. Flyers and Penguins right ahead of them with 69 points. Uh, the Capitals are out of the mix right now. They got problems. They're in ninth place the with the Panthers. <laughs> I am not forgetting about the answer, uh, the Islanders. First of all, Panthers third place team with 65 points, leading four points clear of the Capitals for the first place spot in their division. Toronto rounding out the top eight playoff seed, 64 points. Islanders, Bob, get this, 19, eight and five in their last, what, 30-something games there. Yeah. They are a 500 team. They play against your Rangers next week. They are now, last week they were 10 points out. They are eight points out. I am keeping my eye on the Islanders. Trade didn't... trade rumors also for the Rangers. Are they going to break up their team chemistry to get another sharp shooter, Rich Nash, out of Columbus? They play Columbus on Sunday. If they're going to make that deal, watch out for it to happen this weekend. Yeah. I don't think they're going to. But they might. They what could uh, bolster Bruins? their. Uh, you gonna make any trades? I haven't heard of any rumors for the Bruins. Uh, we'll get moving through this quickly though, because we're starting to run out of time. Western Conference Red Wings, 80 points, leading all teams. Vancouver right behind them, 78 points. San Jose, also third place team in the West, 68 okay. points. St. Louis is sitting behind Red Wings, 75 points. Nashville who I heard recently has maybe the best goaltender in all of hockey, if not behind Lundqvist and Tim Thomas. Nashville is going to be a tough team come playoff time. They are sixth seed right now, 72 points. The Blackhawks, who play your Rangers tonight, 65 points. They've been falling off a little bit lately. They would not like to get a win tonight against your Rangers. Uh, the LA Kings still holding tight, yep. 65 points, holding on to that eighth seed. But again, just like last year, Bob, we went through this – there is so deep out there. Phoenix, 63 points. Calgary, Colorado, Dallas, Minnesota, Anaheim, all separated from 62 to 57. So they're all right behind uh, the AC seeded Phoenix right now. So a lot can still happen as we wind down this uh, NHL season. Yeah. Quickly on golf before we touch on the Whalers. And uh, also locally speaking, I do want to mention the Danbury Hatters girls basketball team, 20 and 0. Yes. Golf, lefty lives. 
It was all Tiger all the time. Right. As uh, the networks work. are desperate, Bob. They are desperate. Yes. They need Tiger Woods back in their life. They have to have him. Yeah. And they pair Phil up with Tiger on the final day yes. over at Pebble Beach in the Pebble Pro-Am there. And what happens? Lefty uprises. He's six shots out. He shoots an eight and under, wins it by two strokes, 11 strokes better than Tiger yeah. on the day on Sunday at Pebble. Lefty just in time for the Masters, which we'll be gearing up for next month. Yeah. Figure out to talk a little golf. As you know, it's rainy today, but the temperatures have been so mild mm -hmm. here on the uh, Northeast for winter, and they look mild next week. I'm yes. starting to get, I, I'm starting to get giddy with the fact well, that I'm, we're not going to have a winter. I'm getting ready for baseball. Whalers and the chili uh, chili cook-off. Yes. Chili winter warm-up. Save the date Sunday, February 19th, 1 to 4 p.m. at the Danbury Arena, downtown city center, Danbury. Come on down. And Dave King me. will be there, yes. of course. Uh, look for Dave King's music online. Search him out. You will find it. Chili competition, money for winning nonprofit organization. Plenty of activities for kids, of course. Entertainment, Dave King leading the way. Discounted public skate. If you got yes. your skates, you want to come out and skate. Chili tasting and more. Bob, what are you doing for the day there? Um, videotaping. Videotaping. <laughs> Bob with the camera, of course. Yes. Maybe we'll run some video. Yes. Get some good stuff of Dave. I will. Um, He's probably got some new music that we yes. can listen to. So shoot Dave up and we'll put How him in the show got? next week. Speaking of music, quickly uh, before you talk about the Whalers. Yes. I do want to wish a happy birthday and a welcome back to Fatty Roots' very oh, own Mikey Dredd. Yeah, he's back. Back from St. Thomas, and yes. the band is back in action. They'll be around. I'll yeah, update you on their okay. uh, shows. The Whalers are in third place, place, correct? Yes, they are in third place. Winners of three straight? Three straight. We're playing um, the, the uh, Federals this weekend, which will uh, be on Friday night. So come on out and watch another bloodbath. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and Thousand Islands on Saturday. So they're looking pretty good as we gear towards the playoffs. What do we yes. got? About two, three weeks before the uh, playoffs? We got three weeks left before the Three weeks. Over. And some of the suspensions are winding down. The coach yes, is back on the bench. Uh, uh, Phil Esposito is back. Uh, a few of the other ones will be back uh, this week. So. Mike, uh, Alex Scoop will be back this week from the, the former uh, Danbury Trashers. So, all right. So we'll have. So they played really... through the suspensions. They've won three straight. Okay. They've moved themselves back into third place. Go check out that chili, chili winter warm up, right. and we will we'll see, see you, you next week. week as we get back into our live routine. Yes. Thank you to John Newmuller, Danbury Live Saturdays, and Barb. Watch her later tonight, tonight. on uh, seven thirty these days. Yep. Take care. We'll see you next time. Thank you.